Bork had many achievements during his time in office, but on reflection, he has often stated that his greatest achievement was the reintroduction of Medicare in 1984. You see, Hawke had a vision of Australia, a vision where, in his words, there are no second-class citizens, to provide better healthcare services for all Australians, and most critically, to continue to unite together in the great task of national renewal. Mr Hawke also floated the Australian dollar and set in place many of our economic systems, which still have sustained our nation for generations. And who could forget that not only was Bob Hawke an outstanding Prime Minister, he held the Guinness World Record in piss gulling. But, <laughs> Yeah. Had a lot of skills. <laughs> <laughs> What's this but, <laughs> but a memory of Mr. Hawk, which is buried into the psyche of many older Australians, is that of his reaction to the Tiananmen Square massacre. It was his own sorry responsibility to share with the Australian people what had happened. And he was shaken by the violence and terror that had taken place. And he gave an address and throughout the speech he wept. He, he cried with compassion for the plight of the Chinese people. And he took action, offering asylum to more than 20,000 Chinese students still in Australia. He was a man who embodied the compassion we can all only seek to sustain. Even since he had left office, Mr Hawke represented our nation. He guided our politicians, and he was a true son and elder of Australia. Hawke once said, the essence of power is to be conscious of what it can mean for others. Bob Hawke was of the best of us and yet flawed in the way that all people are. But he reformed Australia and took painstaking care to include all Australians in his vision of the future. And now I would like to tell you what this Australian icon means to me. And I told you earlier that Mr Hawke instituted Medicare and indeed he is the father of the modern Australian healthcare system, which we were all born into. And those of you that know me will know that every two weeks I walk into our local hospital, I go up to the second floor, into the ward, and I receive life-saving treatment. And because of Bob Hawke, that treatment is free. Because of Bob Hawke, that treatment is available to me. Because of Bob Hawke, I can stand before you today and tell you with confidence that I'm just one of the millions of Australians who owe our lives and our quality of life to this incredible individual. For many, if not all Australians, Bob Hawke should represent life as we have it today. And it should be noted that Hawke was never one to back down from a hard fight. He was a proud supporter of Israel, visiting three times in the 1970s. In 1976, whilst he was the leader of the opposition, he was the target of an assassination attempt by Palestinian terrorists due to his support of Israel, but he still didn't back down. Throughout his prime ministership, he was a strong advocate for Soviet Jewry who wished to make Aliyah to Israel to escape Soviet Russia, and in 1987, he met with the Russian leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, and successfully had several high-profile Jews released from the Soviet Union. He was a man of conviction, and he acted in accordance with his beliefs, no matter the threat. It is fitting that Bob Hawke presided over the changing of our national anthem in 1984 to advance Australia Fair, which we so proudly will sing today. Mr Hawke embodied the ideas and ideals of our nation. He embodied our national character and was a symbol that represents everything that our national anthem says. And so, for Bob Hawke, wherever, wherever he may now rest, where he is now truly, eternally young and free, may we sing with pride. 
Australians all, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. Please stand for the anthem.